tell in class reason what it is? All of you know what brick walls are for, right? They block or forbid something from passing through. And if someone tries to run through a brick wall, fails the first time, but tries again two more times, you would call them insane, right? Because according to Einstein, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. This is the case with the affirmative plan. Charles Rangel, a New York congressman, proposed a universal, universal National Service Act similar to the plan John presented, not once, but three times, in 2000, 2003, 2006, and 2007, according to the Center for Research on Globalization. Not surprisingly, the bill was defeated by the House of Representatives each time. First off, the affirmative proposing plan that mandated all citizens between the ages of 18 and 24 to serve a 500-hour uh, minimum of military or civil service. This plan is clearly unworkable because it will cr create inexperienced workers, illogical because of the gross amount of money necessary to initiate the program and carry out the program, and undesirable because national service is completely unnecessary at this time. First of all, John's plan is impractical because a crude workforce will arise. Since, when, uh, since his plan calls for just um, 500, hours of train, uh, 500 hours of service, all of the members still have to get training before they have the service, so the recruits are given much less time to learn when other workers have been engaged in the job for longer. Armstrong Williams of the Washington Times writes, because of time and resource constrictions, conscripts usually receive, receive only rudimentary training, which can cause bloodshed during hostile situations. According to U.S. Army and Army Reserve recruiting, one must go through nine tough weeks of basic combat training and then complete advanced individual training for six to 52 weeks, where soldiers learn how to perform their specific Army duty. On average, one non-conscripted soldier would have to go through a year of training just to get through BCT and AIT, when a mandated soldier only receives much less of that training time. This is highly dangerous for the individuals who must risk their life in the armed forces with little to no training compared to the professionals. In addition, the Center for Deliberative Democracy states that requiring universal service would weaken the military by bringing in a flood of people who do not want to be there and who may not be committed or well suited to military service. Not only will the conscripted citizens have inadequate training, but their inadequacy will deteriorate the level of professionalism in the army. In addition to weakening America's workforce, their plan will cripple our economy. The Brookings Institution estimates that each involuntary volunteer would cost from $27,000 to $30,000. In a similar plan, the Generations Invigorating Volunteerism and Education Act, sponsored March of last year, was estimated to cost $6, million, $6 billion over the cost of five years, says Fox News. These statistics clearly show that the potential benefits of this pro project, like patriotism, unity, and youth skills, are not nearly worth as much as the money and effort being put in. Additionally, the first post writes, National service doesn't create real jobs. It would st stop able-bodied and able-minded workers from working in real jobs. Compulsory national service suppos supposedly opens up thousands of job opportunities, but it only gives youth less time to pursue a job opportunity that they enjoy and have interest in because they now have to spend 500 hours doing service. Their plan is also extremely risky because it puts your tax dollars at stake. Tax dollars that are already way too high because of other government-funded projects. The money that us as citizens pay already cannot escalate any higher for another potentially hazardous project that is not urgent and is not needed right now. Which leads me to my last point. Lastly, adopting this plan is highly unnecessary. The number of civil volunteers in America is already very high, with approximately 61.3 million according to Corporation for National and Community Service. CNCS also found an increase in voluntary by young adults, ages 16 to 24, rising from 7.8 million in 2007 to 8.2 in 2008. When we have young people in the U.S. increasing in volunteer activities already, why is there a need to force more young people in the U.S. to become workers in a system that has enough workers? Also, the idea that national service is needed now is absurd. Our country is in no national emergency, and no country has the capability, realistically, to attack us in neighboring countries. Ultimately, a mandatory national service system weakens professionalism, wastes money, and is utterly unnecessary. By setting only 
a little bit of training time for workers to do 500 hours of service, you detract from the quality of the worker. By instituting this program, you make our economy fall when it's already in a recession. Most importantly, a draft in this time is less beneficial than the efforts used to start it. And remember this, Charles Rang Rangel ran into a brick wall three times with the Universal National Service Act. How can two high school students pass through the brick wall the first time when a respected congressman can't even pass through after trying three times? Okay. Thank you.